Now we've looked at how CircuitWorks can build a SOLIDWORKS assembly, we're going to take a look at how the system works the other way, how we can take a SOLIDWORKS part or assembly and export it back out into CircuitWorks so we can then save it as an IDF file for use back in our ECAD system again. Typically, you might even want to start the process in SOLIDWORKS. In this example, where we've got a cell phone PCB, the shape of the printed circuit board here is actually quite complex. So how you'd normally start the process is to actually model the circuit board initially in SOLIDWORKS using the packaging of the cell phone in order to get the shape of the circuit board and then you'd export that out as an IDF file. You'd add components in your ECAD system, export it back in, maybe make changes as a result of analysis or if things don't fit properly in SOLIDWORKS and then export it back out again. So you end up with this two-way link between SOLIDWORKS on your ECAD package using CircuitWorks and together from the electrical side of things and from the mechanical side of things you can slowly improve the design. Now before we export this, comp this assembly we're going to first of all have a quick look at how it's constructed. Now this assembly was built by SOLIDWORKS but you could of course equally export an assembly that you'd built from scratch that SOLIDWORKS hadn't made. Now one thing to bear in mind is that CircuitWorks uses feature names in order to determine what's what. So if we take a look at the feature, the SOLIDWORKS part that represents the printed circuit board, you can see the board outline sketch is called board outline, the component keepout sketch is called component keepout. If I move down and look at these components, you'll see for example, component outline for example, is the name of the sketch that defines the component outline. So if you're building an assembly from scratch not using CircuitWorks and you want to export it as an IDF file using CircuitWorks, there are certain naming conventions you can use in order to tell CircuitWorks what, you, what you've modelled represents. So in order to tell it, that, tell it that a component is a component, you have to name it in a certain way. In order to tell it a board is a board, again, you have to name the sketches in a certain way. And all that's covered in the CircuitWorks documentation. In this case, the assembly was modelled initially by CircuitWorks in the first place, so it knows full well what's the board, what's the assembly, what are components, what's the keepout area. So we don't need to make any modifications to the way anything's named to export this assembly. What I'll do first, just to prove we're not cheating, is to edit the board sketch and maybe change the shape slightly. So let's make a change to the actual shape of the printed circuit board. You'll see here the the sketch that's been built by CircuitWorks is not constrained. That's an option. It could just equally well have produced constrained data. So it can produce a fully constrained sketch or a non-constrained sketch. So now I've made a change to the shape of the circuit board itself. I'm going to move some components about. Let's move this, move the screen down there. Let's maybe move this component up here. Excellent. Not perhaps the best looking cellular phone, but it should prove our example. OK, so now I've made a few changes to the shape of my cell phone, moved a few things around. All I need to do to save it out into CircuitWorks is literally click this icon here to export into CircuitWorks. Now as soon as I do that, CircuitWorks displays this dialog to ask me which way up the component, which way up the assembly is modelled. Now in this case I've only got one option, the other two options have been greyed out. And that's because CircuitWorks modelled this assembly itself, so it actually knows which way up it is. But if you had modelled an assembly completely from scratch, so CircuitWorks had never seen it before, you could model the assembly off the front plane in CircuitWorks, off the top plane, off the right plane. So in order for CircuitWorks to know which way is the top of the board, which side is up, you just literally have to click one of the three options to tell it which way the board's aligned. So in this case, it already knows, so it's already selected the option for me. So I, all I need to do is click Continue. What it's doing now is it's scanning through the whole assembly, scanning every feature in the assembly, and looking at the geometry. So it's analysing the geometry of that assembly in order to bring it back into CircuitWorks. Right, it's now finished, and this is what I've got in CircuitWorks. If we look, the preview image is showing me pretty much what exactly what I've done in CircuitWorks. If I change it out the way, move it out the way in SolidWorks, move it back, you'll see there's the preview image. So I instantly know that what I've done is correct. I know I had it aligned correctly. I know that my changes have worked because I've got the preview image on export as well as on import. I can see everything's fine. Again, as I'd expect, I know that these, compo these components don't have stars on because I know they're already in the component library. It knows what the components are because of the ECAD information that was embedded in them. So it's as simple as that. Once I've got the assembly information back from SolidWorks into CircuitWorks, as I did before, I can make changes. I'd forgotten to add, for example, you know, if I'd forgotten to add a component height to a certain component, I could just, our buzzer here, for example, I could just edit it 
add a height. Let's give it a height. So now it's gone solid. Now I've made a change. Now I've got that height. So if I'd forgotten to do something in SolidWorks, or maybe I'd exported some components I didn't want, I'd accidentally s exported perhaps the case of the mobile phone, and I didn't want that in my IDF file, I could literally just select it, filter it out, or make a change, move things about. Because we're back in the same CircuitWorks interface, we can make the same changes to the SolidWorks data, to the CircuitWorks data that we've now got in CircuitWorks. We can make the same changes on export as we did on import. So once I'm happy with my data, all I need to do is press the Save button, as you'd expect from CircuitWorks, and save the file. I can give it a name. I can call it CircuitWorks Exported. I can choose the file format. I can choose IDF4, IDF3, IDF2, or even CircuitWorks' own file format, CWX. In this case, I'm going to save it down to an IDF2 file. Click the Save button, and there you go. I'll get a message telling me that the telling me that the file's been saved. One thing you'll note is there are actually two paths there because IDF two and three files actually each consist of two files. So it's telling me that that data has been saved to a ENM file and an EMP file, and that's all there is to it. So we've now saved the data all the way from SolidWorks, taken it back into CircuitWorks, made any changes that we need to make, and then saved it out as an IDF file. And now that IDF file can be taken, emailed, sent, put on a disk given to the electrical people with their ECAD system, they can br now bring those files in, they can see those changes that have been made in SolidWorks and update the routing information, anything else, make any changes they need to do, and then when they're satisfied with their changes, they can send back IDF files, they can be brought back into CircuitWorks, then into SolidWorks, and so on. And you can keep go going through this iterative process of having the files go between the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineers until both of you have come to the conclusion as what's the best design. You've, you're looking at the mechanical issues such as the physical size and shape of the circuit board, the packaging, heat build up, that kind of thing. And you can also look at the electrical, electrical issues in the uh, ECAD software.